Hello, welcome to Falda Barcelona. I'm Eduardo Chamorro and I'm going to explain to you how we're going to use our biomaterial and paste 3D printer that we hack and produce here. Uh, we're going to make another series of tutorials on, in the future on how actually to produce one. Today we are focused on how to use it. So the first thing we're going to need is, of course, the printer itself, a computer and a cartridge full of a material. We need to produce some material to use it. So we need to take out the cartridge that we're going to fill with material. So we have prepared here some little tools like a industrial cookie or bread mixer, some spatula, a weight, uh, some glycerin, a shanton gum, basic materials for making really simple biomaterial for this test for today. And let's start mixing. So let's put up also some nice black nitrate gloves. We know exactly the total amount of material that comes in these containers. Uh, the formulation changes a lot on what you are doing, but you always want to have a little bit of a uh, quite toothpaste thick consistency. Now that we have here the base biomaterial, we're gonna start adding some glycerin. For that, I'm gonna take a scale and weight. Shampton gum, glycerin. Let's put some nice 50 grams of glycerin in this case. Let's wait this spoon and let's take some 10 grams of Shanton gum. This will work more or less for half a mixture of most of the biomaterials for 3D printing. Yes, exactly. Okay, so we will need a little bit of water, but let's put that first speed to mix everything. Water from Barcelona, local water. And let's leave it like this for a while. So now that it's shaking and all the dough has been mixed properly, let's stop it. Done. Let's open it. And let's put the dough in this little container that we have here. And let's check the consistency. Runa is nice because it stays like a one single block. It has kind of a ceramic or soft clay consistency and has a good cohesion. This is thanks to the Shanton gum. So it seems like a good mix. We will see. Sometimes we need to readapt a little bit the mixture, but for now, let's start filling up the cartridge. We have two caps. The start, we will connect to a extruder system. The blue cap, that we can unscrew it. And watch out, because in the inner part, there is an O-ring or a rubber ring. It's important not to lose this, because it helps for creating the seal for the air pressure. Then, in the other side, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to take it out, especially with gloves, yes, <laughs> sometimes work. <laughs> uh, if not, you can use a little bit of air compress to take out the piston. So now that we have the dough in a plain state, what we're gonna do is fill it up. We don't want to fill up by hand because they will create a lot of air gaps and air pockets inside the mixture that will later also create some explosions that will not give us a nice print. So we want this to flatten the mixture nicely and push it hardly until we reach the end of the pocket. Then we turn the cartridge. We'll do it for you. Let's see if I can. And kind of we make dog nuts <laughs> and we mix again our mixer. And we repeat again, again, over and over until we have the container completely mixed. The mixing technique of the cartridge is key to get a good print and a good quality print. So it's important to don't make any bubble gaps or air trapped into the mixture. It's a 
sometimes where the cartridge starts to get quite full, it becomes slightly more difficult, but don't stress. Just a little bit of patience and you will get it solved. Now we need to insert the piston. This hold well your cartridge, push from the back and press it. Now clean well the thread and put the cap, thread the cap. It should come up nicely and smooth inside. If not, it's because you have not aligned the cap properly for the cartridge. Now it's time to jump onto the printer. Now the whole system is assembled, but we want to show you how to disassemble, assemble so you can use it and clean it completely on your own. So first thing we're going to check is that the machine is completely turned off and let's disconnect it from the power supply. You will see that the screen still keeps on for a while until it actually gets all the electricity sucked down by the electronic board. So now that it's completely off, we're going to start disassembling the cartridge. So let's turn counterclockwise won't screw it so the cartridge is completely out. Basically we replace the extruding FDM head for a standard FDM 3D printer as this Creality Ender 3, a custom end effector with a extruder motor and a pressure system that will help us to push and dose the material evenly. You will see nicely that we have different nozzles so you can change the nozzle type so we can easily swap so the system that we have produced actually is just mounted by four bolts. One here, just on the bottom, on the left, and a little bit on the top. So with a standard 2.5 uh, Allen X key, we can unscrew them. The extruder can fall, so hold it with your other hand. And we have our extruder in our hand. What happened? The motor is still connected to the printer. So disconnect the connector and you can completely take it out. There is a motor and an in inlet for the material and the nozzle out. This system is composed of two, still two components. The motor, you can screw it to clean it, uh, doing some maintenance, or just in case your material got jammed inside because it's too dense, we can see the screw that actually will dose all the material. Watch out with this screw because it's a it's a quite thin and it's slightly fragile. As you see, right now there is an adapter plate that will help you to locate uh, four screws at 40 by 40 distance, so it's equal, and the weight of the whole extruder and everything is evenly distributed. We are mounting the screws in diagonal. You always mount in cross because that will help to center all the system and distribute, distribute the load and the stresses among the material. So let's put the connector here already and let's screw clockwise gently the cartridge. It should come in completely smooth. Be sure that the cap is sealed. In here we have our air compressed pipe. In our case we have a valve to open the system and an air gauge to tell us the pressure. So let's put the connector on top of the cartridge. This cartridge is rated to a maximum 6.5 bars. That means we cannot use it at more if we want to be safe. Normally, different biomaterials have different pressure range for printing, uh, even ceramics, depends on the water content that you mix your clay with. Uh, it's always good to start in zero and start increasing the pressure until you see that actually the material gets compressed and the piston moves the material down completely. We have our goat at zero. We're gonna open the valve. See the, pressure, the system pressurizes a little bit and we're going to start rotating clockwise until we see that the gauge is increasing. One bar, two bars, three bars. We know already that this mixture is going to be printing really well at four, five bars. Let's keep it at 4.5. Okay. So now it's time to connect the machine to the computer. For it, we have a mini USB cable that is connected to the machine and a standard USB that goes to our computer. Uh, the, our choice of program for controlling the machine is Repetir Host. It's an open source program that allows to control the machine, move it in X, Y, Z, move the extruder to extrude a little bit of material and also allow, allow us to put the G-code file of the file that we're going to print. So we need to click on connect 
If the machine is not connecting properly, you will see because you will not see that the machine is not resetting as you will see in the LCD screen. In that case, you might need to install the drivers for compatibility of your, on your computer. Now, we're gonna jump onto controlling the machine. We're gonna move up, the machine moving Z up, and what we can do is extrude a little bit of material to check that the machine is loading the material properly. We can see that right now we are making a starch potato spaghetti <laughs> coming out, and that's nice. Let's home the machine. It will find the origin set point for the X, Y, Z axis. We can cut the potato and start leftovers of the extruder. And we can launch our file. For that, we will go on to print preview, edit, decode, and we're gonna paste the lines of decode here. I have already made up this file with a custom grasshopper component. Well, we also have like a setting for Cura and other slicers. So in our case, we will paste here the G-code the G-code file that we have created with, in this case with Grasshopper, but we also have a compatibility for Cura and other slicers that uh, we have made to make it easier. And now we can just start, click start print, print start printing, and we can see that here on this side we have the feed rate to overrate the speed and flow rate to overrate the total amount of material that we are printing. Right now we are printing the base, so just a small cap, it's a circle, Usually the first layer is the one that looks quite ugly, but the second one is there for helping on the aesthetics and also for increasing the stability. You can see the line that we are printing exactly on time. 